Speaking of particular percussion sounds, I remember you telling us about uh, you were on Rip Rig and Panic yeah, as a kid, right? right? <laughs> yeah, just a t uh, yeah, you had a uh, role, a very right? small contribution, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that was an amazing day. That's my favorite Ross Hahn record. Uh -huh. That's so. an amazing album. Because of the band, it was um, Elvin, Richard Davis, and Jackie Byard. Mm -hmm. oh, um, that's amazing. Yeah, it's a great band. Anyway, he had this piece, I forget the name of it now, I think it might be something like Hippery, Slippery, Flippery, something like that, yeah. um, where he, he wanted to start it by playing a harmonic on the horn, and then at the end of it, he's going to hold this note that really sounded like a chord, you know, uh -huh. and, and then he wanted me to break a glass. Like, so the idea was that the note broke the window or something. Right? Sure, okay. And this was uh, Rudy Van Gelder's place, uh, and Rudy was a you know, famous engineer, great engineer, mm -hmm. um, but he was very anal, and the place was like almost uncomfortably clean. Rudy wore white gloves when he recorded, and they didn't get dirty. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Yeah, it's wild. And, and considering that all the ne'er do well musicians, you know, coming through there, that the place would be a little more, uh, you know, right, yeah. down home, a little funkier. No, that place was like pristinely clean. Hmm. Was, he was a clean freak, you know. He was an anal cat. Yeah. Uh, and um, he was horrified at the idea of breaking the glass man, in the studio. You know, it's like no way. And they and but Rasan had that indomitable spirit. If he wanted something, he was going to get it. You know. And they went back, eventually, th this is what they came up with. He had a little backyard, this is in Englewood, New Jersey. He had a little, little bit of land with some a tr a tree or two, and he, they found a rock. They went out in the garden, uh, in this little spot, found a, a decent sized rock, put it in the bottom of a, a metal trash basket. Put the mic over the thing. Uh, my idea was gonna throw the bottle, and all the glass would stay in the, container and they'd be able to record it. Mm -hmm. So so we did the piece, man, and, and he gives me the cue, he hits a note, he goes, and I go, man. And uh, I thought it was a great take, not because of what I did, but just what they played. And he said, no, I, I want to do a second take, I want to do it again. Okay. He says, anybody got a, we need another bottle. Anybody got a bottle? And like, nobody had a bottle. Now Elvin stepped up and he goes, you need a bottle. <laughs> no problem, kid. And he pulls out like a fifth of, of whiskey. It was about three quarters full, half to three quarters. And he just goes like, it was like a scene from a movie. He just goes like this. <laughs> Here you go, kid. <laughs> <laughs> On one breath. That's on crazy. one breath, man. Ah, and you know, if you listen to that record, which I, I do recommend it, that's my favorite Rasan record, it's a great record. Mm -hmm. um, you can definitely hear the before and after Elvin did that, because he was always very loose uh, around it, you know. After that, he was real, you know, you, there were, you know. <laughs> and, and I remember Rasan had one tune that started in. 4-4, four, four, but it went into 7-4 on the bridge, something like that. Mm -hmm. And Elvin, after downing that bottle, uh, he was having trouble with it or something. And, and Rossan said, hey, Bobby, Bobby, play that, play, go on the drum, show Elvin how it is. And I said, oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. He said, no, come on, Bobby, come on, Bobby. <laughs> so I did. I, you know, I could play because I'd heard, I'd been at rehearsals, I knew how it went. You know. mm -hmm. And Elvin's kind of looking down at me like, <laughs> I'm sorry, Elvin, please don't be upset. He, he made me do it. And, I play. and of course, you know, you hear how he plays it. It's unbelievable. I still, I don't think he knew it was in seven or the bridge, but it's just natural. It's just great, man. Yeah. You know, it's loose. He just plays through it. And it's like a, a beautiful uh, waterfall of drumming, you know.